Robert Lowell was a deeply private man, but during the 1960s, political involvement earned him considerable public fame. Like Norman Mailer and other members of his literary generation, he became a leading protester against American policy in Vietnam, bringing to the movement not just his stature as a poet, but also the authority of belonging to one of America's oldest and most aristocratic families. But Robert Lowell was a poet, and let me enforce upon you one notion. Poets come rarely from the middle class. They come, they come from the top and the bottom. Now introduce Mr. Robert Lowell, who, if I were to fulfill this in true spit-ass MC fashion, would have to be announced as coming from the top. Oh! Lowell's family had come over on the Mayflower. His branch of the family was mainly preachers and poets and so on. And so they were the dreamy side of the family. But nonetheless, the name was uh, huge, and the name was theirs. This very zany evening. <laughs> we, we, we're all very different. Our styles are different. Our points are different. And our poetry is different. And um, he could never quite separate himself from being a Lowell. And being a Lowell is being automatically very sort of grand. Uh, for example, Elizabeth Bishop right. wrote to him at one point saying, I think you're the luckiest poet I know because all you have to do is write down the names of your relatives in a poem. And it has all this sort of resonance, it has America, you know, the Mayflower sort of history. If I write down my Uncle Artie's name in a poem, nobody's going to want to know. And you have that sort of head start over um, every other American poet just by virtue of being a Lowell. 